what exactly is it that an emergency manager does? And for those folks that I'm friends with, my usual response is they pay us to sit underground and think evil thoughts. However, to get really more specific as to what it is that we do, I always describe emergency management as we're basically a coordination and a management piece. There was a famous company that had an advertising slogan, the, and the advertising slogan went something to the effect of, we don't make the golf ball, we make the coating that makes the golf ball go further. And that's my analogy for emergency management. We're not traditional frontline emergency responders, but we're hopefully the coating that makes those frontline emergency responders go further when it comes to taking care of emergencies and disasters within our, our community. Basically, we're charged with making sure that we're prepared for natural hazards, for man-made hazards or technological hazards, and for homeland security related issues that happen within our jurisdiction. Global thermonuclear warfare. Uh, today, if you just uh, move the clock forward about 40 or 50 years, now we plan for incidents of terrorism uh, rather than uh, uh, those other issues. Regardless of what system or method that you have in place to warn the public or share information with the public or alert the public when there's severe weather or other emergencies, the real key to making it work is to make sure that the public understands what that warning means. And the way that we do that is by getting out and talking to the public educate them about what the signals are. For example, uh, does your community have a uh, regular test of various warning systems? Here in Sedgwick County, we have a test of our outdoor warning devices every Monday at noon during clear weather. And we don't test it when it's cloudy because we don't want people to become so used to that Monday at noon test that if we ever were to actually have a tornado Monday at noon, they would say, oh my gosh, it's the test, and essentially ignore the outdoor warning devices. So uh, the key to that is public education. Utilize websites, utilize the opportunity to go out and visit with uh, civic groups and uh, use those opportunities to pass along the information and education to those folks because as leaders in the community, they will go out and talk to others and spread that knowledge even further. In terms of public education, some of the resources that you might want to consider, uh, check and see if your jurisdiction uh, utilizes a website. Uh, make sure that you've got up-to-date information on the website. Uh, make sure that you go to the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency website at FEMA.gov and see what publications are available. Uh, publication support is available uh, to at least a limited extent through FEMA, and uh, those handouts can be very uh, apt and very useful uh, when you're making an appearance at a civic group uh, to help you. You might even want to take some of the information from some of those handouts and some of the materials supplied by other organizations like the American Red Cross and combine them together uh, in a publication that provides information tailored specifically for your jurisdiction. The issue of our elected officials is extremely important as far as emergency managers are concerned. They're important at our local level, at our state level, and especially at the U.S. federal government level. Why, is that, why are they important? Well, really, one, and one very important reason is they're the ones that set the policy that we operate under, and they're also typically the ones that provide the funding to allow us to execute the policies that they set so that we engage in our operations. Now, it's very important that elected officials need to understand that they have responsibility for making sure that their jurisdiction is prepared for responding to disasters. And one of the key questions I always get, whether it's from a member of my Board of County Commission, or from a state legislator, 
What's my role in an emergency or a disaster? And that varies from time to time. But basically speaking, any elected official needs to be ready for a couple of roles. One is an elected official may need to serve as the voice or the spokesperson of the disaster to help communicate what's going on to the local jurisdiction. You know, as a local elected official, they're a known quantity and they're a leader within that community. And it's important that they be able to communicate what's going on. It's also important that they understand the overall process so that they don't try to get involved at a level that might not be entirely appropriate. For example, legislators uh, and elected officials are typically policy experts and they're typically not tactical experts. So that would tend to indicate that you'd want to keep them involved and advising you and you advising them at the policy level so that the actual frontline emergency responders can execute the tactical responsibilities of dealing with an emergency or disaster. The key here, like it is with so many of our partnerships in emergency management, is open and honest communication and making sure that those policy makers, funders, and legislators have a clear idea of what it is we need to do and the resources, particularly funding, that's, that it's going to take to make it happen. Disasters are inherently political issues. I've always viewed it as my role as an emergency responder not to become involved in partisan politics, but to make sure that the policy issues related to emergencies and disasters are addressed so that the needs of the people are met. Now, how is it that these issues can become political? Well, let's stop and examine uh, a couple of issues. Look at, uh, for example, the impact in a, a community that's had a large-scale disaster that has experienced, for example, relocation or evacuation. This can have an impact on the political system because the voters in a particular political jurisdiction may live or be relocated elsewhere. So this has the potential to become political. Like I say, I've always viewed it as my role as an emergency manager not to attach a particular political party to an institution, to a, an incident or to the policies, but to make sure that those things don't spin off. Uh, to the extent that I can control uh, into political issues. The uh, partisan issues belong to the elected folks themselves and not to us. Open and honest communication and making sure that you're able to communicate to them what you need in terms of the policy support and what you need in terms of the financial resource support uh, in order to make these things happen. The process that typically happens is there's a cost-benefit analysis that happens. We formally call that process setting a budget. And that's always a very difficult time, whether it's your local jurisdictional budget, whether it's the state budget, or whether it's the, the budget of the United States of America. Uh, that's always difficult because a budget is essentially the single most political activity that any elected body usually does because it outlines the actual work that's going to happen over whatever period of time that budget's going to cover. So it's important to make sure that you understand what the budgeting process is for your jurisdiction and that you have the appropriate level of input so that the folks who put the numbers together in the financial analysis end understand what's needed and understand if they make this decision, here are the potential consequences.